Hello everybody and welcome back to the podcast you're listening to To Be Candid with me, your host Amber. If you are a returning customer, if you're back again for another episode, thank you so much for being here and if you're brand new to the episode or to this podcast, today we are going to be talking all about fears, which is something a little bit different but just something I thought would be quite interesting to talk about because, I mean, some people have light-hearted fears in terms of just things they're a bit scared of, sometimes they can be completely irrational and make no sense to anyone but you and sometimes they can be like pretty deep and pretty scary and very real so I thought it'd be like a fun subject to get into today. It's currently Saturday, I'm about to pull the plug out of my microphone which won't be great. (laughs) It's currently, I lied, it's not Saturday at all, it's currently Sunday, Christian, my boyfriend, is out for the cycle today, I've got the house to myself, which we all know by now is my favourite times to be able to record a podcast, because I can just chill with you guys, we can just catch up, have some girl time, give each other the lowdown, at least I can pretend we're giving each other the lowdown, I always feel like I've had a really good conversation with a friend after these podcasts, so I hope you feel that way too. But I think to start off, as always, we'll get into a little life update. Um, What can I tell you? Last night, yesterday night, we went on a date night for the first time in a very long time. If you didn't know, I live in London, in Brixton, and obviously everything is starting to open back up now in England in terms of like restaurants and bars and you can sit inside now, which is really nice. And a couple of weeks ago, I was just kind of getting sick of you know, walking around the park and going to the same cafe, like, as lovely as it is and any other weekend or any other time in my life, I would have really loved those moments, but it's just when it starts to get very repetitive and I was just kind of getting in a bit of a rut. So I just decided, and I didn't consult anyone on this, I just got on my phone, booked a restaurant, booked a little fun activity for after dinner and just went up to Christian and was like, we've got a date night booked in two weeks time, I'm not going to tell you what it is but we're going to go out and have a nice time. And it was really fun because I think it was kind of a surprise. I was more excited for like the reveal of it. And obviously Christian had no idea what it was. So it just made it more exciting and it felt like a proper date, even though obviously we, we lived together and we were arriving together and all of this stuff, it still had that kind of sense of excitement, which was really nice. So we went to dinner at Scarlet Green in Soho, which is like an Australian restaurant. I had never been to an Australian restaurant before. And I it's not cheap by any means. It's like a medium ranged restaurant. I would say like the mains are about around 18 pounds. Um, but it was so good. So, so good. I was kind of nervous just because they're very well known for like their bottomless brunches. And it did seem like quite like a girl's place, like you'd go with the girls for like a few cocktails. So I was kind of nervous Christian wouldn't like it, but he ended up ordering a steak and he said it was like the best steak he had ever had. The food was next level. So that was really nice. And then I had like a little bit of an interlude. There was a gap between the end of our dinner and our next activity, which was going, or which was um, crazy golf, which we used to do all the time, especially when we first started dating. But obviously we haven't been able to do it recently at all. So we went to Swingers in West End, which is like a crazy golf place there. It's so cool. They have a bar and everything. It's really nice. Um, So we were going there at half past nine, but we finished dinner at seven. (laughs) I think we ate quite quickly because I think our reservation was at half six. And I think we finished eating by like quarter past seven. Um, So yeah, and I had the idea of going to, there's this bar that supposedly does like the best Guinness in London called Toucan which is right where I used to work so I was like oh we can go there and have a drink because it's one of those places they they have them a lot in London where you just grab a drink and you can like stand on the side of the road which sounds really strange but you just like pile out of the pub and or just like stand around and drink your drink and it's lovely but they weren't allowing that but I think with like the licensing or Covid or whatever um and then I was like oh, okay we can just get some drinks and go sit in Soho Square which is like a lovely little green bit But then Soho Square was closed, so I got really unlucky with, like, my backup plan. So it was a little bit unfortunate. We were just kind of, like, wandering around, did so many steps, but finally got into swingers, had a game of golf. Christian won. I was very close, but he stole stole my victory. 
but yeah it was really really nice so that was fun um we also ended up like getting back at like midnight which i also haven't done like with christian for a while i've been on a few girls nights but even then it's we've got home before 12 i want to say because everywhere closes now i also have a story about a lost package which i thought was kind of funny basically a brand had got in touch wanting to send me something for an instagram post i was like yeah yeah this absolutely sounds really good um gave them my address and then i had like a what do you call it like a shipper's email through saying like it was on its way or it would arrive on friday or whatever and then nothing ever showed up i was like oh god like it's just going to be delayed which is annoying because i wanted to shoot the photo etc etc and then i went on to like the tracking details to have a bit of a better look and there was proof of delivery and i could see the parcel outside the front door on the step it was not my front door and I freaked out because it's quite an expensive thing these, this brand was sending me. And so I, yeah, I was panicking. I was like, oh my gosh, whose front door is that? I was like trying to wreck my brain thinking about our neighborhood and have I seen that front door before and anything like that. And then I looked at what address I had put into the shipping details and I had put our current address, like the street name, but then the postcode I had used was my old postcode from Dulwich where I used to live. I was like, oh my god this is so unfortunate so i messaged my old flatmates who still live there luckily and was saying like oh did you get a package from me they were like we're away and we've been away for a week so i hope it's still not on the front step kind of thing and i was panicking i was like i don't think it's your front step because obviously that used to be my front door to my old house so i know what it looks like so i did a little bit of a investigator detection and um, went on google maps and typed in the number of my current house and my old address because I was like maybe they've just given it to the person with that number on the that postcode do you know what I mean like my na old neighbor um and so I was on like google street view or whatever going down there <laughs> to the street trying to find the front door and I found it so I managed to convince Christian he was like cycling over that way so I was like please can you stop by and see if they have my package and they did. And I was so happy because it had been like a week since this parcel had been delivered. And I hadn't realised. Christian properly screwed me over though. He came home and was like pretending that they didn't have it or that they sent it back. And it was this whole ordeal. And I was stressing out. Honestly freaking out. And he was like, no, no, no just kidding. Like it's in my bag. Oh, what a nightmare. But yeah, only I could do that. So I've learned my lesson. that I'm going to be triple checking every tiny piece of information i ever put into another delivery ever again but what a palaver at least i found it because honestly i don't know how that would have gone do down otherwise like kind of shameful the last little thing that i just wanted to plug was instagram reels i've spoken about this before but i'm freaking loving instagram reels i do a lot of them like about funny work things which i quite like and you guys seem to really enjoy but then recently i've been doing like some outfit ones or some ones when i'm like exploring london and stuff and they're just so fun like i don't know why it took me so long to get on it kind of thing but i think i've kind of screwed myself over because i started making instagram reels before tiktok and now i find instagram reels way easier to use than tiktok so my tiktok game is slightly slacking but if you're ever thinking about making an instagram reel i say freaking go for it because it's so much fun okay i feel like i've babbled enough Shall we get into the fears? My fears specifically I'm going to be talking about. Just like some random things. You'll see what I mean when we get into it. So, okay, so we'll, we'll take a step back in time. For ages, my biggest fear, if and because I feel like that's a question you get asked when people are like trying to get to know you or whatever, like, oh, what's your biggest fear or what are you scared of the most? And I would always used to say my biggest fear was the thought of like the potential of not being able to have kids that was like the biggest fear i don't know why i just always had it in my head i think it's because i know like family members who have struggled to get pregnant so i just kind of assumed that that would be my route as well but now i'm thinking you know i think back in the day like that was what i thought my life's purpose was was to have kids like i was convinced that all i wanted in life was just to be a mum when i was like a teenager and stuff but sitting here now as a 23 year old i can imagine my life without kids so i feel like that fear has kind of 
taken a back seat and has been replaced by some other monsters which is great which we'll get into but i just thought it was really funny how like something can play on your mind and it's obviously one of those things that it's not necessarily a reality ever unless you're faced in that situation like way down the line but as a teenager that was my biggest fear which i thought was really interesting especially because i think it's not something everyone thinks about in terms of like if you don't necessarily know anyone that's struggled with pregnancy or getting pregnant or with their fertility and things it's not really talked about in like movies and stuff people just kind of fall pregnant so i just thought that was kind of interesting that that was my mindset as a teenager um i was also terrified about getting lost as a teenager that was a big one just because i think i was in year seven or year eight no year seven i was definitely year seven so i had just started in my new secondary school i was 12 or 13 I believe and it was my first time maybe it wasn't my first time a couple of times maybe um getting on the school bus to go home and it was like a pound you hop on get off at your stop everyone knows how bus works but it was like specifically a school bus for the kids and I got on paid my pound was sat on the top deck and I was kind of talking to my friends I was like some of my other friends haven't gone which is weird and then people started like getting off the bus and I didn't really know where I was and I think because I had been distracted by some other people I hadn't really been paying attention and then the bus stopped and was like last stop so I got off I had no clue where I was let me tell you and at that age I just had a mobile phone I didn't have any other money or like a card on me or anything because my mum had just given me a pound for the bus like when she dropped me off at school and I had no idea what to do I literally thought I was like stranded in Timbuktu I tried calling my mum but she was at work so I don't think she picked up I think I tried calling my nan as well but I don't think she picked up so in the end I called my dad who lives quite far away from me not like ages but like a good mm, half an hour 45 minute drive from me and I was bawling my eyes out I was like I'm lost I don't know where I am I got on the wrong bus I don't have any money and he was like just stay where you are and I'll come find you god knows how he found me to be honest I think I gave him like a street name or something maybe um so he came and found me and dropped me home which was so nice and it's hilarious now looking back because my nan moved house and she now lives on the corner where I was stranded and got lost so I have that little moment of deja vu every time I walk past there but I think from that moment on I was just kind of nervous that I wouldn't know the way or whatever so I would always triple check like google maps or make sure whoever I was going with knew or I'd pay such attention to like the where the bus was going or each time the bus mentioned the street name whatever I'd be like taking it off in my head like oh yeah three stops two stops one stop so that was really funny I think I have got better at it now just because I have more resources I guess I'm not just like a 12 year old girl I have like my phone and friends and London's very easy to get around and I have my card with money on it and stuff so like I can just get an uber if I need to so that's not really as much of a stress obviously it's always nice to know where you're going but I think there's some fun now getting lost like it is a bit of an adventure I just think at that age I just felt very vulnerable and very alone and I had no idea what my next steps were supposed to be so I think having now experienced that I can kind of figure out like oh I'm I'm not stranded like I can make my way home somehow the other fear I wanted to talk about there's a couple of my next ones which I just think are quite common fears so I just wanted to to chat about them so I think the first one which I know a lot of people have is like a fear of needles like injections and stuff and I'm really lucky I think in the sense that that's never been a huge fear of mine in terms of like I don't enjoy it obviously no one enjoys getting stabbed but I've, I don't think I've ever fainted from getting a needle stuck in my arm, but I just don't look. That is the tip. I sit down, I talk to the person. I try and make as much conversation as I can with them because I think it's just it's a nice distraction. Like I'll ask them what they're doing at the weekend or sometimes they'll ask me a question and I'll, I'll give them like a full-on essay as an answer just to distract me from what's going on. And then I just do not look. I think as soon as, if I saw the needle going into my skin, that already in my stomach, I feel like a pit in my stomach. I feel a bit queasy thinking about that. 
but in terms of like ear piercings and things I just don't look and so every time I had like an injection at school or if I was going on holiday and needed like a jab or whatever I think just not looking and just chatting my life away (laughs) has been kind of my go-to so I'm so thankful about that because it is just one of those things that has to happen like so many points in your life you need an injection whether it's at the hospital at a dentist at pharmacy at school like there are so many alternatives or not alternatives so many situations places where that becomes a thing that is actually a reality rather than me like panicking about my fertility which who knows what's going on there but a jab is a pretty certain thing especially I guess with covid everyone getting vaccines and stuff so I would just rather get it over with not pay too much attention than like dwell on it too much so that's my top tip if you have a fear of needles the other irrational fear that I have is spiders which again a lot of people can get behind a lot of people have a fear of spiders and like phobias of spiders and honestly as a kid my fear of spiders was pretty bad not not like a phobia or anything but just in the sense like if I saw one I would run away I would not touch it I would get someone else to take it out etc etc and then I went into Duke of Edinburgh which if you're not from England you might not know but it's a basically like a challenge I guess you do in school and you go on like a big hike over a couple of days you have to do so many miles um, and it's kind of like survival training kind of and so I did that and I think from that my fear of flies and bugs and spiders and worms and all of that kind of thing kind of disappeared because you have to get real down and dirty like nitty gritty kind of gross with the outdoors so that kind of diminished my fear of spiders it then I completely forgot about this one actually I have not written it down but from Duke of Edinburgh it gave me a fear of cows which we'll get into but um my fear of spiders like completely left which was great because then when my friends freaked out I would just get rid of it which came in so handy because Sarah if you're listening my university friend I lived with in second and a bit of third year she had the worst fear of spiders like she would scream if she saw a spider and I was lucky at that point that I was like oh okay I can just get rid of this spider because I don't really have that fear anymore so we were a good pair um but then as soon as Christian moved in my boyfriend something happened like something just flicked and it still happens today like I'm home alone right now if there was a spider crawling up my bed for whatever reason I would quite happily get a cup put it over get some paper throw it outside like not an issue however if there was a spider crawling up my bed and Christian was here I would be jumping out of the bed being like oh my god Christian there's a spider come and get the spider and for whatever reason I just can't do it when I know Christian's here. I think it's because mentally I know there's someone else that can deal with it that isn't me. Because like I don't enjoy it. Christian quite likes like looking close at the spiders and whatever. That is not me. I am not a boy scout. Get those spiders away from me. If I have to deal with it, I will deal with it. But if Christian is here and I don't have to deal with it, I ain't going anywhere near it. But I just think it's weird how that happens. And I don't know if it's just me being like a bit of a loser and a bit of a wet wipe being a bit like codependent on my boyfriend because the same thing happens in restaurants like when I'm out with my friends I'll ask for the bill but whenever I'm with Christian I do not want to ask that waitress anything I just know there's someone else who can do it so I'm like no no you just do it I don't want to talk to her thank you and it's so bizarre but that was definitely me as a kid like I would never speak to waitresses in restaurants and stuff I was terrified yeah I nearly forgot going on to my fear of cows this is a story for you um girls on my Duke of Edinburgh course if you're listening out there I'm sorry that you're gonna have to relive this with me but it was traumatic honestly so we were on the Duke of Edinburgh hike going through like the new forest or something I don't know something really random and there was this big field of cows that we had to go through and I was kind of nervous about it I think we all were a little bit but we're like it's fine they're just cows like in a field they'll mind their own business and there were quite a lot of them. I'd say there were like 30 cows. Anyway, we were walking through, like not really making on eye contact, just minding our own business. And it was absolutely fine. And then once we got across that field, we came to another field, like a little bit more well, like half the size, I guess, of the field that we had just walked through um, with about six black cows in it. 
And I was like, okay, guys, like, don't worry. We're just going to walk through this one. Like, we can see the end. It's no big deal. So we all jumped over this gate or, like, climbed over the gate that you were supposed to climb over. Started walking all in a single file because we were just walking along the edge of the field line. And for whatever reason, I can't remember if, like, the cow started it or one of the girls started it. But all I remember is running. There was a lot of running. The cows started running. We started running, like, literally screaming, which I don't think helped. And I got my head stuck in, like, a bramble bush, like, the spiky bramble bushes. So I had to, like, rip my head out of that bush. It felt like freaking Velcro. And at the end, we were all throwing ourselves over this gate because it's, like, those step ladder gates. There's, like, two steps and then you have to cross over. But we've all got these huge bags on and six cows chasing after us and there's six girls so we're all trying to get over this fence as fast as possible not realizing that on the other side of this fence is stinging nettles so i think my friend brooke which i've spoken about who i've spoken about before on this podcast fell face first into the stinging nettles which was not pleasant bless her her face was so swollen and i think some other people like put their hands in it and stuff and we ended up oh god we ended up in the middle of the road sobbing our eyes out like every single girl was crying um and i think me and my friend fran were trying to like get everyone out of the middle of the road being like let's go sit on the field like everybody calm down and we did have a phone that we could call our like what you call them supervisors with so we called them just to say like brooke has been stung in the face by stinging and i was like i don't know if it's gone in her eye blah blah blah. so they came and checked on us to make sure everything was okay and I was, like, debriefing them on what had happened. I was like, yeah, I even lost my sunglasses in the field. And then my supervisor goes and gets in the field with these manic cows. And it's absolutely fine. Like, they come up and sniff him, but he just doesn't move. So then, I don't know what I thought these cows were going to do. Or what we thought these cows were going to do. But I honestly thought I was going to be trampled to death. And since then, I think I was, like, 15 or 16 at the time. Cows have not been my friend. I am not... A- a- I'm not, I'm just not a fan, you know, I've been scarred from that moment. I think now I'm a little bit better, but I just don't trust them. Like, as long as there's a fence between me and the cow, I think they're beautiful creatures, but I just don't want to be in a field with a cow at any point in my life. So, yeah, that's another fear. Very irrational. Let me know if you have a fear of cows, because I've never met anyone else apart from, obviously, the girls I was on Duke of Edinburgh with who have had a fear of cows, but... Apparently it's just us. Okay, now it's time to get a little bit deep, I think. I think the next two things I'm going to talk about are, like, my main fears now as, like, a 23-year-old woman living in London. So the first one I don't think will come as a surprise to anyone. My biggest fear at the moment is, like, getting abducted or attacked by a man in the streets, you know? It's just... It's sad that it's such a big reality and I think it was always something I was aware of because you get told about it as a teenage girl like oh be careful and like don't get in a car with anyone and don't talk to strangers and like don't go home with anyone you don't know or trust your intuition with like if a guy feels like a creep whatever like trust that and everything um and I'd always read like thriller books and stuff so like girls always get abducted and things and horrible things in those books And I remember there was a time me living in Greenwich, um, walking home from the O2, which is where I used to work. It would only be like a 10, 15 minute walk from the O2 to my house. But sometimes I'd be walking home at like 2am because it was like after a gig or whatever. And I would be very paranoid about like any guy or any person I came across. And I think at that point I was like, I'm reading too many thrillers. Like I need to take a step back because... It is really making me paranoid, making me think about all these crazy things. And then I hadn't really thought about it. I think just because I live with my boyfriend. So whenever I would go out late at night, I was always like with someone or with my boyfriend, which obviously just made me feel like a lot more safe, like rather than walking down dark alleys by myself or what have you. And then obviously, unfortunately, recently, um, Sarah Everard got, abducted and killed in London like very close very close to where I live she um got abducted in Clapham Common and that's like my local park so that really hit home I think for a lot of people like all of my friends as well that was just 
just crazy and just so so sad and just a huge wake up call and just a really nasty reality that I didn't think I would ever have to face or like really think about that hard which is so naive so silly of me but it's true I'm just being completely honest and I think now that does play a lot on my mind just because I think now living in Brixton obviously the crime rates are slightly higher than certain other parts of London where I've lived before and yeah so that's just something that kind of makes me nervous I try and keep take all the precautions I can but like so did Sarah Everard and she's still in that situation which is so sad but I try and like lock all the doors when I go to sleep and stuff and I have like a personal alarm on my keys that I take with me everywhere when I'm like walking home from a friend's house and like I try and walk on the high streets and don't take any back roads and I I'm on the phone to someone when I'm walking and all of these things and I've got like my emergency contacts and stuff set up on my iPhone so there are obviously like precautions you can take but it's just really unfortunate that that's something girls have to worry about but I think I've realized like living in my ignorance and naivety probably wasn't the best way forward um so I'm trying to deal with that a little bit more proactively but I would say that that is my currently my biggest fear my other fear which I think I've had for a long time but I feel like as I get older it becomes more real is the fear of death and I don't think it's necessarily my death like I'm not really scared of dying to be honest which I don't know if that's strange to say at my age but I feel like I've done a lot like I've achieved a lot I've experienced a lot like I don't think it would be the like I don't know I'm just I'm just not scared of it obviously I hope it doesn't happen but it's not a fear of mine like I don't fear dying but I fear other people dying and like leaving me because obviously my parents and my grandparents are all like getting older now and I really feel it now especially that I live away from home every time I go back to Bournemouth like once a month or once every few months especially during lockdown when I think I went home like once every six months or something like that I could really see them age and I think obviously COVID took a lot out of a lot of people just like the whole lockdown experience so maybe that was one of the reasons why it seemed like they had aged as well but it just becomes very apparent when you don't see someone every day and then you go back to visit them and it's like oh you you've changed you look different like you're you look older um or like they've gotten slower or they can't jump as high or walk as fast or whatever it may be so that kind of makes me nervous but I think the other thing is obviously being in a loving committed long-term relationship with Christian the thought of Christian dying scares the crap out of me don't mind telling you and it gets to one of those points where like anytime I watch a movie or read a book and like someone's loved one is in a coma or whatever I'm like blubbering like a baby because I just can't imagine being faced with that reality like being forced into that situation would suck I don't mind telling you so obviously it's hard because obviously that's a huge fear but it's so out of my control and it's almost a guarantee do you know what I mean like at some point some way or another we're all gonna die like all of my loved ones are gonna die at some point so I am gonna have to face that reality eventually I'm very lucky touch wood that I haven't really had to deal with that yet in any sense of the word like my grandfather died when I was very young I think I was like two or three when he died but I was kind of I wasn't really old enough to understand what was going on and I don't remember him dying or like what that experience was like so I know it's coming and I know it's going to be horrific so it's something I fear honestly like Christian going out today it's like oh I hope he doesn't have an accident on his bike or I hope he doesn't get hit by a car or whatever but it's just one of those things that you just kind of have to manage and I guess almost downplay in a sense because if you fear that too much you just won't live like if I said to Christian don't go out I'm so scared that you're gonna die blah, 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 blah like that's not fun for anyone and he would like resent me for being here and then I'd feel silly for making him stay here and all of that kind of thing so it is something you have to kind of get your head around manage but it's definitely a fear it's definitely scary and I think dealing with that like a parent's death or a grandparent's death whoever it may be is really tough and I really send out my love if that's been an experience of yours recently 
but oh god yeah that's definitely a fear of mine probably one of the biggest that I'm sure I may get better at managing as I get older but may also get worse because as I get older so does everyone else so yeah that's a bit of a strange note to end the podcast on but I don't have any other notes I don't have any other fears that I have written down I'm sure I could list off a few really random ones because we all have like tiny fears that aren't really fears but just like random things that we don't really enjoy or kind of scared of like I hate being made jump like when someone jump scares you I hate it I have since I was a child so my sister we would always cry as soon as someone made us jump or in a movie or whatever and it's sad because it's one of Christian's favorite things like he loves making people jump which is kind of mean but I just will not allow it because I freaking hate it And it does mean that, like, watching scary movies and stuff, I also don't really enjoy because of the jump scares. But that's one of those things that's just so irrational. Because after, like, one minute, less than one minute, 30 seconds, I'm fine. Like, I'm still alive. Someone just made me jump. But I think it's just my body's reaction, like, physical reaction to it happening. Just makes me cry for some reason and I just don't enjoy it. But, yeah, there's so many silly things like that. So definitely let me know what some of your, like irrational fears are or if you want to share like a really deep fear that you have over on the our instagram page at to be candid podcast go ahead like i would be so interested to hear um and i think it's fun to like open up like this with people so yeah thanks very much for listening i hope you have enjoyed this podcast episode if you have don't forget you can always leave a review over on apple podcasts if you fancy it i would really appreciate it and i will be back next tuesday with a brand new episode so i will speak to you very soon Bye.